Oh, who have we got next week? <laughs> Good evening and welcome everyone to our lovely people webinar. You can probably tell that I'm not Deb. Um, Deb's unavailable this evening, so I've taken over the party. <laughs> So anything could happen. Um, so I'm really pleased that we've got the very lovely Emma Klein with us tonight to tell us all about her story and yeah. her experience with the principals. Um, so how long do we do you think we've known each other, Emma? When did we first meet? It must have been at a Jack Club. What do we think? It's got to be a year and a half, isn't it? 18 months, maybe? Yeah, probably something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we met in Birmingham at the um, Just a Thought Jack Club. Uh, groups that take place there. I uh, think you've been to one of Deb's retreats and come along to a couple of the workshops she has here in Devon. So we've known each other for a little bit of time. I think what we normally start with is just getting people to tell us a little bit about their kind of story and their background of what, how they kind of came across the principles. So it'd be great to hear from you on that. Mm. <laughs> so jumping in is straight away, eh? Yeah, dive straight in. <laughs> I'm just wondering if there's any way I can just like not see Mark when I'm talking. <laughs> yeah, he could turn his video off. Can you? Turn <laughs> there you, go. you can mute his video. There you go. He's gone. Yay. Okay. Okay. Um. So, <clears throat> so you won't be hearing all about it because otherwise it will be a very very long webinar. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, maybe the highlights. <laughs> yeah. Um, where to start? Hmm. I think that I was I was always kind of put through a few challenges in my life. I had quite a few challenges in my life, and um, and I attempted to to seek out um, some understanding, mm. and um, and I was still for quite some time. I'm stuck at the level of, oh, I'm going to do meditation, I'm going to do yoga, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do Reiki. Um, and, and they would work, but I remember they would work as long as I was doing them. Mm. And, uh, and I kind of just remember one time a few years ago, my mom said something that I really didn't like. And that was that I'm just using all that as a crutch. So, um, hmm. so yeah, my, my ego didn't quite want to accept that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I still kind of carried on in the same thing, but just feeling like I found myself feeling lost again, just feeling like, you know, I didn't really know what was happening and, uh, had quite a few episodes of, um, like where when my mental health deteriorated um dramatically and um yeah and as i said i just just felt completely lost and like nothing that i've come across was um was really helpful and um and then i've also had some experience with um with addiction and i <clears throat> And I and I realized that wasn't really what I wanted to to be doing. Just like you know, live one day at a time, and just always try to to run away from my problems. And and I sought help around around addiction. And um, and I've come across <laughs> I've come across the um, some courses that Mark was teaching at the time. And um, <clears throat> just as he does, he was just giving some messages about, oh, and, and there is this group, just a thought, if you're interested in it. <laughs> and, um, and I just thought I'd, um, it, it was there in my mind. Oh, what's he on about all this just a thought thing where people discuss, explore their thinking and, how their experience is created by their thinking and um, and it wasn't something that I acted on straight away really it was I just made a note in a book and uh, kind of carried on because I was my, my little one was really small at that time and I had quite a lot going on still <clears throat> but anyway at some point I decided to pop along to one of these 
just the thought groups. And um, I think, I can't, I can't actually remember, but things, things were making sense for me, but it did take some time to, um, for, to, see, to see a difference, really, in, in the way I was feeling. And, um, yeah, so, so there were, like, um, these groups for people in recovery, and I've attended those, and then... And then I popped along to, to Dudley Jat. And, um, and I think at some point I, um, I saw you guys and Debs doing their, her presentation. Mm. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how my, my journey started. I remember I was always doing my best to um, make time to, to come along to these meetings because whatever was happening I just felt a bit better after that and um, yeah and then I slowly started um, <clears throat> incorporating in my you know day-to-day -day life um, the whole thing oh whenever I was feeling in a certain way that I didn't like I was kind of watching started watching my thinking and that made a difference. And, um, and I remember there was this, um, this small episode that, that I had when, um, mm, it was over a year ago. Or, yeah, just over a year ago. I, um, I had this belief that lack of money was making me unhappy. <laughs> Yeah, I had this belief and um and also like being a single mum at that time and um just pretty much on my own and with all the challenges that I had and blah blah blah. I um I still could couldn't really couldn't really uh, snap out of this whole thing that money or actually lack of money was um was affecting my my well-being and it was just a simple thing like I remember I was crying my eyes out in bed with my daughter and um, just because I thought I looked at my bank balance and uh, and I thought I wasn't going to have enough money to to pay my uh, pay for food and things like that and um, <clears throat> and I just noticed how my thinking was going into the whole oh this is going to happen. Oh, you're going to end up on the streets. You're such a shit mom. You haven't done this. You haven't done that. What makes you think you, you're any better? And, and all the rest of it. So I started um, having all these um, thoughts. And, and as a consequence, <laughs> I was feeling absolutely shit. And then it probably just something that was stuck with me in the back of my mind it was almost like oh, wait a minute what's going on for you right now and um and I remember that I, I just had this thought that oh you know what actually I've got a roof over my head now I'm with my daughter now I've got food in the fridge now <laughs> and um and I know that I've overcome challenges in the past, so it's quite likely that I will this time as well. And it's just like how, in pretty much an instant, my experience just changed. And I started to see that it wasn't what I had in my account that affected my well being, it was the way I was thinking about what I had in my account and how affected it, if it affected it in any way, just affected my experience in that moment. So, um, so yeah, that, that sort of happened. And then I started seeing it in, in, other, um, in other areas of my life. And, um, and especially these things stood out for me a lot just this this quote that I picked up somewhere else but I think it it has um it's very relevant 
the belief that so the, the biggest cause of our suffering is believing that what is happening shouldn't be happening. So basically, if at any moment you think that any, something else needs to happen, then you're going to have a shit experience. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I kind of just from time to time, I remember that whenever I want things to be any different, I'm just thinking that it's not because things aren't different. That I'm, I might not be happy in that moment. It's because I would like them to be different. I want them to be different. And, um, and also from that, it, it came the, <clears throat> I started thinking more like, well, it's happening, therefore it should happen. Therefore, there's no, there's no point in me thinking that it shouldn't be happening because it's already happening. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of what, um, what stood with me for, stayed with me for a very long time, stood out. Um, I can't, I can't really think of any other highlights <laughs> until, <laughs> until the, um, the wonderful retreat. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it was quite interesting that just before the retreat, I, um, I had very, um, again, had very strong thoughts of, um, of killing myself. And, um, and then there was a part in me that said, well, at least wait until the retreat is over. I don't want to ruin the experience for everyone else. (laughs) And, um, anyway, and then I did obviously, because I'm still here. And, um, and it really, like, a lot of things have changed for me when I just chose to, to immerse for the whole weekend and just started to see the world through the understanding of the three principles. So, so if anyone hasn't been on a retreat so far, <laughs> yeah, I just really highly recommended and they haven't paid me to say that I was just gonna say we didn't even have to pay you to get that plug in there <laughs> no 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 it's honestly just um changed my experience entirely and um and it's almost like there was like magic happening <laughs> um I think it was um I'm quite tempted to ask you to unmute Mark, but then I'm sure that I would regret that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not <at me. laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because because I'm sure that he's seen he's seen a massive difference in me before the retreat and after the retreat. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't. I I just remember this difference before the retreat. I was. Um, really 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 caught up in my thinking I was really um still in a bit of a self-sabotage um thing that was that was going on for me and just thinking that things should be different and how I can change things and all the rest of it and just resisting whatever was happening and and then I just was retreated off it, as Mark <laughs> famously says. And I was just like, oh, wow. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Whatever it was, I was just like that. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It means, you know, it should happen. If it, if it isn't going to happen, I'm okay as well. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's quite interesting because... I think that's the um mm, <laughs> how to put this the trigger <laughs> I don't know if the trigger is the right word, but the mo- one of the most important factors that led to um us starting the relationship that we have today, just how my my approach to um to how things 
should be, how when I dropped all the expectations, when I just relaxed in myself and just allowed things to be and trusted that I was going to be okay either way, I kind of just stopped thinking, oh, I want this to happen. I don't want this to happen. And I just, as I said, relaxed into that. We, we call it hashtag no expectations. <laughs> <laughs> type of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and it just allowed, yeah, for, for a very healthy relationship to, to emerge. And, um, and I don't know if it would have happened if I hadn't been on the retreat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Anna. <laughs> yeah. oh wow I am um, yeah and it's it's almost like um, I can't I can't really pinpoint as much because it's just become my way of leaving mm. I can I can barely think how oh this is 3p stuff well, actually no because I'm just so used to it that um i don't necessarily see oh now i can now i see now i have this understanding because i think i kind of do most of the time and then it um and i might just pop out of it from time to time so um so yeah i don't know what else to say really i found it um i have just attempted to share my story at chat as well sanjat and um <clears throat> it was a bit different because it was like less directed i kind of just like and i couldn't see myself which again <laughs> probably <laughs> helped <it> sometimes <laughs> yeah it yeah, probably helped um <laughs> Couldn't see people popping in and out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone. I think I, I really just enjoyed listening to your story there because there's just, there's so much in there that is just what I, you know, for want of a better word, just normal, you know, single parenthood, um, suicidal thoughts, addiction, all that kind of stuff. Like that just resonates with so many people day to day. And to hear you then talk about, you know, now being in a healthy relationship with, you know, no real expectations and no kind of pressure on yourselves. That, you know, that's just, for me, that's what came out of your story, um, which is just a really lovely space to live from. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's what I was kind of hearing. I, what, one of the things we always ask people to kind of talk about a little bit, because we obviously, we go in with kind of your story and what you, how you came to this principles understanding. And by this point, if people are listening to the webinar, um, and they're perhaps a bit newer and haven't heard much. They're kind of going, so what are these principles then? What is this understanding you talk about? So um, putting you on the spot now, do you want to share a little bit about what you kind of see, what the principles are and kind of what your understanding around them is? Mm, yeah, I suppose I can do. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. Well, hmm. I think I think I did this at Sanjat a few times at least, and now I'm just like being put on the spot. And it's yeah. like, mm, how do I do it? How do I say it? Um, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter anyway. But I'm just gonna no, no expectations. Just no sorry. expectations. Yeah, exactly. So, so for me, um, starting, I think it's it's easier to just start with with thought. So, so the three principles, thought consciousness and mind um so we, we thought i think that that's where my journey kind of started to to see that we don't have an experience like an outside in experience and we have an inside out experience and again what what that means for me is that it's not reality or whatever you call it, what's happening outside of me that has an impact on me. It's, um, it's the way I interpret it. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that my thinking 
create a story around it, basically. So, um, so yeah, and that, and then that would, hmm. And the lesson I learned from this thought principle is that I think Michael Neal says we're only ever one thought away from a completely different experience of life. Mm. And there are many moments when I do remember that and, and I'm like, oh, actually, I could have this thought. I could look at it from this perspective and that's more useful. That's more enjoyable. So, so there is thought. Hmm. Then mind, yeah, I'm just gonna gonna go with my my um way of, of seeing mind is um kind of like I look at it as the um electricity, <laughs> the energy, the um there is this intelligence behind everything, like just looking sometimes at a flower and just thinking how that flower is, you know, the shape that it has, that who designed that and, you know, that having these sort of questions and, and for me, it's kind of seeing that mind everywhere. And um, how, as I said, to me, it just seems like there is an intelligence be, behind everything that, that we, we can perceive. And, um, and also, I like I like Deb's ex explanation of um, you know like the um, is it the plasticine? <laughs> is that the one? Yeah. yeah. Go on, go for yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Emma's version of Deborah's version of the yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so the plasticine being the um, the mind. So so everything is made out of plasticine. Everything is made out of this energy comes from the same place we all come from the same place we just take different forms mm -hmm. and it's like looking at you can make a car out of plasticine or you can make a human being out of plasticine or a tree or whatever else you want to make a house or yeah etc but at the end of the day they're all plasticine they look like this they look like that but um beyond being that before being that and actually still being that they're still plasticine and um and i think that that's a, a useful one to to explain mind really or um <clears throat> yeah i think i think i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it at that no one will get too complicated <laughs> and I th yeah yeah and um, I think very re similar to this, another quote that, that I go back to quite a lot of the time um, is that we're not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. And I always kind of go back to that to, to remind myself that again this this is temporary and um and beyond being emma <laughs> i am i'm just a part of of mind i'm just part of the um like a drop in the ocean or you know that that sort of thing that hope that kind of explains the way i look at it and then there is consciousness, and then again, I'm, um, I feel like I'm, I'm borrowing everyone's versions of it. <laughs> Maybe I'll get to a stage where I make my own. <laughs> um, um, whenever I think of consciousness, I just think about the um, metaphor of um, like a glass lift elevator, whatever you call it. Yeah, a lift or elevator. I think it's um, Michael Neal's one. And so our consciousness, our awareness can be at different levels and, and it fluctuates. So there are times when I can be at a higher level 
and I can see things in perspective and I can remember these things. I can be like, yeah, this is all the reason having a temporary human experience. I'm just, you know, a spiritual being and, and my experience is created through thought. So I can have this quite higher um, awareness, consciousness, and, and also not necessarily identify with the form that I present myself in, whatever. And there's times when that consciousness, that awareness drops a bit, <laughs> or it drops even more, and it just seems like... Um, not like it's the end of the world, but yeah, yeah. Sometimes it does seem like it's the end of the world. <laughs> if, um, some things don't go my way, or uh, yeah, and, and then I kind of just think back afterwards, and I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's probably my my best shot at this moment in time of the uh, the three principles. Perfect. So I, I, I was going to ask a little bit because you touched on this earlier um, to tell us a little bit more about kind of what you do and how you get on with them. Um, you share some of this in your work and you also do the Sunjat group every week as well, don't you? So I wondered if you wanted to share a little bit about kind of how the principles, where it kind of sits, because you said you also said about how it's kind of become a way of life for you now. So if you don't mind talking a bit more about how that works for you, if you like yeah so um so i um i work for a company that delivers courses for um for people usually people with addictions mm -hmm. and um and deliver deliver a couple of courses to help people make better decisions basically and um and there are times when I really feel like it fits in to, to just bring in the, um, to explore with them a little bit the, the principle of thought, but without necessarily saying that I'm doing that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so I kind of guide them through a series of flip chart things <laughs> and, and um, to see whether it's what's happening on the outside that creates our experience or whether it's the way they look at it that creates their experience. Mm. So, um, so that's, yeah, that, that's the one thing that, that I do just kind of briefly exploring the, the thought principle in there with them. And, um, and again, I have no expectations for people to, to get it or to want to to understand it or I just put it out there and, and if they want to if they want to ask more they can ask more and I also um tell most of them about um again whenever I remember whenever I think it's appropriate tell them about Jat because <laughs> obviously they're they're in Birmingham and the majority of them that I teach and I tell them that that there are these groups and they can carry on coming to these groups if they want to. And, um, and some of them do, and that's, that's really lovely to see. Um, so then probably the, the group that I've been involved with the most is the um, Sanjat, the Sunday Jat. And... Um, yeah, I think I think it was it was Mark who started it. Who had the thought, oh, let's do another jat, and uh, he said, but I'm I'm not going to do it weekly unless someone um, volunteers to to help me as well. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> Little, yeah, I know Mark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's that's kind of how we started, and I was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. I'll, you know, agree to to do. It. Let's do it weekly because I think it's it's better for people to know it's there every week rather than is he on this Wednesday or is he not this Wednesday? That's kind of the thing that used to be with the previous group that we did. 
he did. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, so Sanjat started simply in this way because um, from from Michael's Michael Behan's um, Jat, just the thought group, which is based on the three principles and the uh, the power of now. Um, Michael does a very a very mm, how how to put it I would say quite quite a basic understanding and he he does that um he used to do that through his flip chart he used to do that I mean now he does it through the PowerPoint presentations and and he takes someone through his slides or his flip chart pages and he just explains it pretty much all the time in the same way <laughs> and um and it's that that's lovely and i um and i took a lot from that but i think the second or third time i saw him doing near enough the same thing i was like i want to do more than that mm -hmm. i want to explore different topics i don't want to keep on going through the same things over and over again and um and i think mark had a similar um view on that and that's what he wanted to do to to explore Jat a bit deeper to continue the conversation to um I suppose it, it just has this um it's like a family now <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting it, it's grown so much over these last 10 months couldn't even believe it when we heard it. it's been 10 months um it's grown so much and people um People come and didn't even don't even expect them to come. Don't know where they heard about it from, and um, and yeah, it's it's not very structured at all. We just talk and we give each other space, and it's it's a loving loving space. And I think for me, the most important thing is um, that I was getting from going to to Sanjat because I wasn't always facilitating it. Is um, giving myself those two hours to just be in the now, to just kind of start, okay, observing my thinking, ground myself a little bit, remind myself of all these things because we can, we can forget, can't we? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and it, it was just like a really nice weekly reminder. <laughs> and no matter what's happening the whole week, can look back, and it's good because it's on a Sunday as well. <laughs> can look back and be like, hmm, this really caught up in my thinking this week. <laughs> and look back and, and laugh. And, uh, and we've also had people joining us through, um, through Facebook video calling. We're considering um, using Zoom as well to, to let people um, join in who, who can't necessarily be there face to face. Um, for this Sanjat and um, yeah that's that's kind of what what we do really and point people in the direction of um, seeing things the way we start seeing things and um, and we see massive differences in people and it's it is just lovely mm. it's, it's it's open for everyone and yeah amazing <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of hearing the same message there that we kind of share is that staying in this conversation and kind of keep coming back to it and being reminded of what we're talking about here it just makes the biggest difference I think that's what you were saying about coming to the retreat as well just having three solid days of sitting in this conversation just has a huge impact on people um, yes it does yeah so I wondered if we might want to open up and see if anyone's got any questions for you. Um, so you can either raise your hand on the screen um, and I can unmute you or you can unmute yourselves and ask Emma any questions if you want to. Or has she answered all of your mind bending questions already? <laughs> <laughs> No takers. I think you've answered everything anyone could ever have wanted to know about the principles. Oh, Mark's raised his hand. 
Okay, there we go. Do that. Unmute. Go on then, Mark. You're good to go. Okay. Can can I put my video back on then? That's no. the question. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> that, was that really your question? <laughs> yeah. Can I? Can I? <laughs> Emma said yes. Oh wow. Okay. Hold on. Just for the question, then you got to go again. I think that wasn't. Okay. Yeah, I'm no. back. Hmm. Well, since you're there, Mark, do you feel like sharing a little bit, Emma said earlier, about what you saw in her before and after the kind of immersive retreat she came on? Do you want to share something about that, since you're unmuted and we can see your face? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I can specifically uh, speak about... Um, I mean, there was, there was clearly a difference before and after the retreat I, I remember so so when emma said that um she mentioned about being retreated off it uh i remember that though that was my that was my comment to emma a couple of times because i think the um the immersion she had with you guys uh down in devon uh and the and and the insights that emma experienced while she was there um led to like a real this, this huge shift um, <clears throat> so much so that um, she would quite um, passionately point to the fact that some of the experiences that I was expressing at the time were <laughs> where they were from <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think a couple of the times I might have said it in an exasperated fashion, God, you're so retreated off it now, aren't you? <laughs> Something like that. But actually, um, but actually, you know, on a serious note, um, I think it's just, it's just, <clears throat> it's just really helpful. I mean, um, I think it was Michael, uh, Michael Neal, that did a short animated video on relationships. I think it was Michael Neal. I don't think I've I'll, seen it. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it you. It's only about two minutes long. Um, um, and it just talks about how relationships can be with two people that don't necessarily, necessarily have a certain certain level of awareness. And, um, and, and then he refers to how a relationship um, can, the experience of a relationship can change, even if just one person has... Uh, an awareness of this stuff um, and knows where their, their experience comes from and, and can have that then uh, level of compassion and understanding for the other person. Mm -hmm. Not all the time, of course. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then refers to what, what, uh, what a relationship can be like. I, don't, I mean, I can't remember what he said the relationship was like, but I'm going to tell you from my experience what the relationship is like. Uh, when, when two people, uh, have this understanding so <clears throat> so so what it's meant in the long term I guess follow, following the retreat because that's when the big shift I noticed happened um, for Emma although Emma's always been quite an intuitive kind of person anyway mm -hmm. uh, but yeah there was there was a big shift and of course then there was uh, you know our, our relationship so so what I notice is that both Emma and myself get caught up in our thinking yeah sometimes emma gets caught up in her thinking and i'm like hmm she's caught up in her thinking but i'm not caught up in her thinking and i'm going to keep myself separate from that and about two minutes later i get really caught up in it <laughs> <laughs> and 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 maybe vice versa although with Although with that Emma, I've noticed she can notice it and maybe sometimes not get caught up in it, which is really cool. Um, but the wonderful thing is, it doesn't last very long because I think once the doors open, so what I so so what I mean by that is once we have that level of awareness, um, that can't really be shot. We might we might be looking in a different direction we might get caught up in all of that in the story and the rest but there's just something there that goes ding ding hang on a sec yeah that this isn't what's going on what you're thinking isn't what isn't what's going on 
And, and when that happens for two people, so that will happen for me and that will happen for Emma. And, and we have quite a big house, so that's pretty cool. So, you know, the, the space, the space, you know. I and, can hear you from downstairs anyway now. <laughs> can you? That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and what happens really quickly is that we both individually notice um, the story that, that's going on and um and 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 it's not necessarily happens at the exact same moment but fairly fairly close but we both recognize the stories that we're that we're um <clears throat> acting on or, or whatever act you know acting off those particular thoughts and i don't know it's just strange it's just like um there's just like a, a mutual knowing all of a sudden there's a mutual knowing and it's like you know what none of that matters none of that matters it's not who we are actually we're connected from that place of <clears throat> consciousness yeah so so you know without the without the you know if we step back that that space that we have inside of us the separate to our thinking, separate to our emotions and all the rest. Um, when we connect in with that place with ourselves, when I do that and then when Emma does that, so, so, so then just naturally we connect in, in, a, in a really deep way. So this, so this like human -y stuff that goes on, <clears throat> which is all part of what we bought into when we came into this experience. That's my belief. Um, just leads to really a deeper connection. So I think, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, uh, <clears throat> and and I think, and, and I think as well, Emma underplays underplays what she does with the people that she works with. So she she has this secular job. Yeah, she works uh, in a teaching role to help people in a cognitive way understand things from different perspectives so they can make better decisions and improve their lives. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a little spoiler here. Yeah. So, so Emma often lets me know, she'll come back after a day's work and, and let me know how far she is behind in teaching the course content because she's been chatting and having this conversation with her learners um, about, about the principles. And, and then when I've been privileged enough to read some of the feedback from these learners, they, they write some feedback on their, on, their, on their paperwork, I notice in their language certain things about insights. They'll use that word, insights that they've had. And, and, and I can't think of it now but there'll be specific language in there and i can see by that language that in just that short amount of time that they've had in proximity with uh, emma they're also experiencing these shifts so hopefully my md will never get to see this our md because we work for the same organization will never get to see you this uh, youtube video when you put it on um, <laughs> Thanks very much, Mark. I'm going to see if anyone else has got any questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you did have your webinar. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, anyone else got any questions for Emma? Oh, Terry, Grill, I'll unmute you. Oh, you're done. Okay, go. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a question, really, um, or a comment or what it is, but... Um, I've been very curious and interested in this present moment, the, the now. And you, I heard you go by really quick in your conversation about the power of now. I've, I just got, got the audio book. I, I, I read that book forever ago. I have no memory of it whatsoever. But I thought I'd listen to it again from this perspective. Because I'm so interested in the experience of who we truly are, you know, looking to the mind portion. And from that understanding, the way we see thought becomes completely different because we're no longer caught up in it. 
as who we are and we need to do something about it. We're okay. We are mind and thoughts come through and, and go and they're fleeting and they're like waves. And, and in the moment we can see it happening and, and it no longer is our identity. So I'm wondering about you, your brief mention of the power of now, how that is blending for you with three principles and or whether it is and how that you're sharing that. Mm. Thank you for, uh, for bringing that up because, um, hmm. I think because of my nervousness of being on the, uh, the webinar, I kind of just love things were very, you know, just kind of went, <laughs> but, um, yeah, the, the power of now I've, um, I've read that a few years ago and, um, and I was like, yeah, yeah, that's great. It makes sense. But you know, all these past, all these future, blah, blah, blah. And, and I think that, that we, we see things on different levels and, and we can understand them on, on an intellectual level. And we can also understand them on a different level. And I um, can't remember exactly when it was, but I, um, I tend to watch lots of videos. I listen to lots of videos of, uh, like, you know, like Wayne Dyer or um, Michael Neal or I can't, can't even think of someone else at the moment, but just, um, yeah, Eckhart Tolle. Yeah, that, that's the power of now. And, um, and I think it was one of them who said that there are no problems in the now. There's never any problems in the now. And I think that the moment that I heard that in the subsequent moments, it's, it's almost like I kind of got it <laughs> on a different level. I kind of un understood it. Understanding it is like quite intellectual, but I just felt like, oh, I see now. I see that actually we never get to experience the past because when we experience the past, it was still the now. And we anyway make up lots of stuff about the past and majority of it never even happened, but we just changed the, the way we remember it. And then the second thing we, with the future, we never get to experience the future because when we do get to experience the future, it's, you know, still now. And, um, yeah, I think that when, when we don't have thoughts about the, the past, when we're not in what was land, as Michael Behan calls it, and we're not in what if land, there's really no, no problems. There's really no, like, I kind of just feel weightless when, and I can remind myself that all that stuff is, is made up. And, and yes, I do. I do actually bring it into my my teaching about not identifying with the thoughts that we have, and um, the fact that we've got no control over the thoughts that just pop up, but we've we've got control over the thoughts that that we engage with, and that sometimes we can just just observe them and. Um, and I do, do kind of see it as a choice still. <laughs> now going back to the whole free will <laughs> conversation. I do kind of see it as a choice and one, and one level at least that all that stuff, all, all those thoughts come and go and I can, I can notice them or sometimes I can take the thought and sit it with me on the sofa invite it, you know, for a cup of tea, invite its friends around and so on. And, um, and before I know it, they're having a party in my house. <laughs> and, um, and I, 
we can have this misunderstanding that all that is, is happening to us, that we're being consumed by the thoughts that we have. Meanwhile, I, I didn't come up with this either, but I just look at it as well. Like it's not the thoughts that consume us. It's us that consume the thoughts. So we, we notice them. We might not notice that we notice them, but we notice them and we pick them up and, um, and we, we choose to, to engage with them, to entertain them, to bring their friends and, and so on. And, um, and at some point you might feel like, oh, I didn't choose to have that thought. Or at the other um, end of the spectrum, maybe beating ourselves up for some of the thoughts that just pop up and thinking, oh my God, I'm such a horrible person just because I had this thought. When actually I had a thought, but I didn't act on it. I had a thought, but I didn't engage it. So um, it, does, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, again, this is, this is another part of, of the understanding for me that we're not, we're not our thoughts. We were the observers of our thoughts. I think that's, that's how Mike, Mike puts it. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of my take on it. I don't know if that answered in, in any way <laughs> um, why you were looking for Terry or if that made sense to you. I think that uh, it did. I, I, I think I was able to understand where you were coming from with that. And my, my personal experience is this sense of uh, awareness or knowing of our, of who we truly are, this state of no time, this state of the instant that we're sitting in right now. And there is nothing else. And how it's curious that understanding and knowing and experience how to play with that along with these three principles. That's kind of what I'm curious about right now. How the, the three principles have been so amazing for me because they've given me a very practical way to see things. I kind of look at it from a little di different perspective, maybe than some people in that mind is it and thoughts and consciousness are experiences within mind, like thoughts, you know, that, you know, the ocean is it and waves happen. So that I know there's a, a lot of conversation around thinking in the three principles community. It's a very accessible, place to start the conversation because people think and they get it right <laughs> and it's a little bit more seemingly obscure to talk about mind and the truth of who we are so I see it kind of a really cool portal and the, the bigger portal for me is this sense of being in the moment and present with what is true for all of us and the, the floating by of experience the appearances we see you know, that uh, really there, we never are experiencing anything but now. It's, I mean, it's impossible. So the, the all answers are now too. All questions, all answers, all quote unquote reality. So yeah, I'm just, I, I'm engaging with you and everyone else about this just because I'm curious about it, how the, how it's unfolding and from that perspective of now and who we truly are. I think there can be a lot of, in my experience of it, a lot of conversation around thinking and getting in control of your thinking or we're not in control of our thinking and all this stuff about thinking and how that plays out. While we're sitting in the middle of mind in perfection, busy thinking about our thinking. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, so that's the kind of thing that's intriguing to me is to 
it just get the bigger picture just instead of just a thought just a bigger picture <laughs> just a big picture it's yeah. just yeah, like it's nothing <laughs> yeah yeah i'm really glad you started talking about the the now because when emma mentioned that and she also mentioned the quote um about i can't i can't remember the exact quote but basically you're talking about arguing with what is um and yeah which i guess is probably probably byron katie um she talks a lot around that kind of stuff and that that kind of stuff when i was first introduced to the principles by deb she was talking to me like you just said terry a lot about thinking and thought and that made so much logical sense to me and then i was reading the power of now and i was reading some byron katie and some of the stuff they point to seems to be more around mind like you've just said and those two things kind of for me at the same time just really made sense it was like two sides of the same coin and i'm from a religious background i kind of grew up in church and stuff so talking about mind and the power of now for me was the stuff that i used to talk about around god and heaven and a kingdom and it was that exact same stuff but in a slightly different language and having those two conversations at the same time thought and it's the power that kind of plays in your life and then mind and the power of now and being okay with what is those two conversations happening at the same time just it was just amazing for me i love both of those things um so thank you terry for your comment just a little something extra here yeah i kind of it's, <laughs> it's like the, the two sides of the same coin thing i almost see it as there is just the coin yeah yeah and this, this there's is only the co ever the coin <laughs> and it appears as if there's something else going on yeah <laughs> because i think you know that um can be we go back into that dual duality again of there's mind and then there's thought and then there's this and then there's that and in reality there's just mind yeah well that's that's the same as like we talk about three principles as though there's three principles <laughs> yeah there's, it's just like absurd right because you're it's all happening in the middle of all there is <laughs> and this and this is exactly why we're doing a, um, a retreat about uh, beyond the words because it isn't none of this is in the words um, right but thank you so much emma and deborah and every or, i'm sorry Jack. <laughs> i'm looking at pretend deborah <laughs> yeah pretend in deborah <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. thanks terry <laughs> Well, well, we're nearly at eight o'clock, so um, I was just going to see if there's anything else you kind of wanted to add or finish with, Emma. Oh, thank you for the <laughs> honour. <laughs> oh, You're so yeah. important tonight, eh? Um, I think that that's a um, a really good point that that you and uh, Terry kind of got to that um, it's all the same thing anyway. And um, and I remember it took me it took me some time to um, to grasp this whole thing. Oh well, form and formless, they're the same. <laughs> uh, but um, but yeah, I think I think that they are. And um, and you know, kind of how just how Terry said now. Oh well, there's no two sides of the coin. There's just a coin. <laughs> um again that that resonated with me and that's kind of where in a way where i'm at as well when um when i'm more aware i think i i use i use thought so much just because as um as you said terry it's just accessible and um and i and i kind of have I gauge the audience a lot of the times before I start talking about mind. <laughs> and especially when it comes to when I'm when I'm doing my job. So don't wanna be, you know <laughs> punished in, in any way for um for not particularly doing my job properly, I suppose. And bringing spirituality into it. Um yeah i um i think that the power of now is important especially as it is eight o'clock <laughs> so, so yeah, i really um i've enjoyed coming outside of my comfort zone and, and doing this thing next time um when i'm going to do something like that if i'm ever going to do something like this ever again <laughs> um I will um, 
I don't know if I would be more prepared. I think I would just have less nervous thoughts yeah. and, um, <laughs> and they will, um, and I'll have an even better experience. But yeah, I hope, I hope I made sense, some sense to some of you. And uh, thank you for listening. Good. Thank you. It's been really lovely to have you on tonight, Emma. Oh, thank you. Thanks, yeah. Em. It was lovely. <laughs> We've got uh, Michael Brown. Ah, Michael Brown. He was one of the speakers at our conference. So he'll be on next week, which will be lovely. So same time mm -hmm. next week. And anyone that's listening in enough time, or um, anyone that's on here now, we've got our workshop on Saturday. If you want to um, come along, oh yes, <gasps> Terry, Terry, we'll all, some of us will be uh, meeting us. up in Spain next week. But that's after our webinar. Um, although Terry might well be in in the air at the point that we'll, be <laughs> so we'll tell her what she's missed when we get to Spain next week. Mm -hmm. So thank you everyone for joining us. It's been lovely to see you all.